So today, I'm going to fix the rake on my truck. As you can see, the, the rake is the difference between the back wheel well and the front wheel well. It's typical in a lot of Ford trucks. You can see the front end is much lower on the, than the back end. So let's just take a measure and see what it looks like. So the back is 38 and 3 quarters. The front 35 and a half. So I have about uh, 3 and a quarter inch rake between front to back. So today what we're going to do is I got some, uh, I got a rough country front end leveling kit for my 18 F-150 and we're going to put that on and we're going to see what the difference is. So starting out it's 35 and a half. Um, let's get this thing jacked up and the tires off and we'll get a little more detail but it's a, a pretty straightforward process how to do this. Okay, I got the truck jacked up and the uh, left front tire taken off. I've also taken off the uh, the front caliper over there. Um, you see I have it resting on a bucket. It makes it a little easier. It doesn't strain out the, uh, the brake line going to it. There's also a, um, your ABS sensing line going to the, uh, the caliper itself, or the, to the brake itself. Um, there's a couple bolts that hold the bracket on. You see about right in here. I took those off to get a little more slack. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, take this bolt off here. Um, the nut off the bolt for the upper control arm. That'll allow the, uh, the whole rotor assembly to swing freely. And then I'm going to go underneath. There's two bolts on either side of the strut down there. Um, one on this side right here and one on the other side. You, Use an 18 millimeter wrench uh, from underneath socket, just like up here in the controller, an 18 millimeter. Um, then that should uh, loosen that up and it'll allow everything to drop away. And then once I get that done, then I'm going to go up to the top, and there's three bolts that hold the strut up top, and uh, loosen those bolts up, and the strut should be able to pop um, right out and drop down. If it's still held up a little bit and I can't get it out all the way. Um, I got the sway bar right in here. Just to, I'll loosen up that bolt, and uh, and that should allow the uh, lower control arm to drop all the way down, which would allow me to uh, remove the strut. So um, every truck's a little bit different in what you can have, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I have a feeling I'll be taking that uh, sway bar bolt off as well, or the nut off anyways, and dropping it down, so it'll allow it to drop. So. Um, okay, so I'm going to get into this and I'll show you what it's like when I get everything taken apart. Okay, so I got the strut out. Uh, it took about 15 minutes. Um, had to do a little more than what I thought. The uh, had to take the, uh, the tie bar off and back over there. I had to take off the, uh, the front control arm in order to get it down. Um, and I also had to loosen up a couple more uh, lines coming over there so you get a little more slack. So when I drop the, uh, the rotor assembly and all that fun stuff and the lower control arm, it gave me enough play to uh, without kinking the hoses or breaking them. So anyways, now it's time to uh, put the spacer on top then stick everything back in in the reverse order. Okay, here's the spacer's assemblies. Uh, you got the two rings on the right. Um, Got to make sure you follow the instructions because there is it is labeled. It says A out on each side, and you see uh, two sets of holes uh, at each at three locations. Uh, depending on what your truck you have, you have different holes you have to put the um, the bolts into. Um, it's pretty simple to do. It only takes a few minutes to put each one together. Combination of uh, nuts washers, lock nuts, lock nuts, and uh, lock washers, etc. So just follow the instructions on that and then uh, put it all together and then put it just basically go back into the reverse order you took everything out. Okay, I got it all back together. Uh, the whole process, um, well, I still did the left side anyways, uh, took about an hour uh, to take it all apart and put it back together. Um, just a couple things, a little couple pointers here. Once you get everything apart and you put the spacer on, um, take the strut, it, it actually rotates 90 degrees to get the holes to line up properly. Um, put the upper part in first. Put the bolts on it, or the nuts on it with the washers, etc. Tighten it up 
and then um, the lower control arm you're going to have to take a long pry bar and kind of pry it down because it's got a lot of tension where it connects onto the frame uh, pry it down a little bit and then that would enable you to take the the lower bolts on the strut and put them in the hole um, you have to you have to like um, uh, bend them a little bit I, not I, not really bend them but re re-angle them or change the angle on them so they go in the hole uh, it's pretty tight uh, the way they're set in the strut itself with the rubber bounce and all that so you gotta I just use a pair of channel locks at the top where they're inset and uh, just grabbed on them and just kinda tweaked them about 15 degrees then pried it down with a pry bar to slid right in then you just go through and put everything back together um, you know the the sway bars the front control arm um, one thing you gotta do those once you get those on you're gonna have to put a jack underneath um, the lower control arm and jack it up um, so you can be able to connect the uh, upper control arm to the to that mount there um, you can see it's kind of stretched out right now only because the shocks pushing it down and there's no uh, uh, no load on it. Once you put load on it, it's going to pull back up so you don't have that really weird angle on the upper control arm. Um, so we'll get the uh, the tire back on this side and then do the other side. It's basically the same process and really that's about it. Um, and then after that we're going to do a kind of a road test a little bit and make sure everything tweaked then do some measuring and then after that point it's off to the uh, alignment shop to get a new front end alignment because you just changed the angle um, in several different points on the uh, the front end so that is a must uh, you can't align it yourself so take it to a shop get it aligned a few bucks but it's worth it um, and you also have them double check all your work in case you forgot to tighten something up while you're down there so anyways we'll uh, be back in a little bit to do some measuring Okay, we got everything all done, put back together, it rolls fine, so let's do a little measuring. Uh, we'll do the back end and then the front end. So last time we did the back end, it was 38 and three quarters. No change there. Okay, at the, uh, the front of the truck, it was 35 and a half. So let's see what this uh, Rough Country lift kit, or leveling kit did. Thirty-seven and a half. So it uh, took it up two inches. Um, tremendous difference on the truck now. Uh, not so much of a rake front and back. Uh, looks a little better. Um, next thing is uh, probably bigger tires. Other than that, um, off to the alignment shop to get aligned. Uh, the other thing we're going to do is um, make sure you readjust your headlights because they're pointing higher, higher now. So you're going to have to uh, go in there and angle down a little bit so you're not blind and nobody down the road. So there you go. Hope you all enjoyed it. And uh, feel free to comment on the video. Thanks.